not to be afraid of warfare, just mindful of it. Now, what do I mean when I say you need to be mindful of it? That means that, means that you need to know that when you start to make an impact on God's kingdom. Let me say it like this. When you start to empty hell, Satan gets mad. Let me just say it like that. When, when, you, start, when you start to change pe- pe- people's lives, as long as you're not changing lives, Satan couldn't care. He couldn't care anything about you. As long as it's just, you know, you're for no more, you know, it's all good. Um, but the moment you start having an impact and you start changing lives, you got to know um, that that's kind of when the warfare starts. And that's okay. That's okay. Because, because we've already overcome it. Jesus overcome the enemy. He's over, already overcome. And then whatever we go through, um, he's given us the power to overcome. Amen? Amen. So that means that we have to, we have to resist the devil like the Bible says. We resist the devil. And uh, God promises that he will flee. We resist, he'll flee. Amen. Um, so just real quick, let's go over this real quick. So go to Luke chapter 19. We're gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just revamp really quick so I can get to the point that I want to talk about tonight. So, um, so in Luke, we're, we're talking about the four people you will encounter as you evangelize, as you go out and you talk to people, as you invite people to church. And that's the whole goal, just to go out, invite people to come. That's what Jesus told us. Just go and invite them um, to come. Um, go into the highways, hedges, compel them to come, he tells in one particular story. Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. Luke, ni- Luke 19, verses 5 and 6. And when Jesus came to him, came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to, said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must stay in your house. Now, the first person you're gonna, you will encounter, one of the person you will encounter, we call them the open. Everybody say the open. The open, that's the type of person you want to encounter. That's the, that's the type of person that make you feel good about yourself. Um, they, 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 build, they build your self-esteem because when you get to them and you talk to them, invite them to church, they say, man, I've been wanting, man, I've been praying about a church. I've been looking for a church. Oh, man, thank you so much, man. I've been praying. And that person makes you feel so good about yourself. And that's what Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus came down. Jesus didn't have to argue with him. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with you today. Zacchaeus was like, cool, say less. Let's do it. And so he went, man, and he changed his life. His life changed almost. Almost immediately, his life changed. Um, now, go go to go to John chapter twenty. Go to John chapter twenty. Let's look at this next one. Go to John chapter twenty. Yeah, go to John. The first one is the first one is the open. John chapter twenty. Look at verse number twenty four and twenty five. Twenty four, twenty five says, "Now Thomas called the twin." And I'm going kind of fast, so if, if I'm going too fast for you, I'm going to slow down in just a few moments. But um, go back and listen to the, go back to our YouTube. So all of you guys should subscribe to our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, our Church on Purpose, our YouTube channel. Subscribe to that so that you can, you can go back and hear these teachings because these teachings are in succession. I, I typically teach in series. And so if you miss one teaching, you, you kind of miss a large portion of uh, maybe what God is saying to you. So I don't, I don't want you to miss that. I want you guys to, to stay connected uh, in that regard. Luke chapter 20, excuse me, John chapter 20, verse 24 and 25. Uh, now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciple therefore said to him, we've seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. The second that person, type of people that you're going to is a skeptic. Everybody say the skeptic. That's the person that's skeptical. Uh, they think that, you know, they think it's a, it's a cult. They think it's crazy. They're trying to figure out what in the world are we talking about. That's a skeptical person. The skeptical person, you know what? I don't believe in that laying on their hands. I don't believe in that speaking in tongues. I just don't believe in all that. And so you, you run into those people who are just really skeptical um, about Christianity. Now, it's not your job to convert them. That's not your job. Not your job to convert them. Not your job to sit and have an argument with them. That's simply your job to just invite them and say, man, listen, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm sure there's so many things, man, that will, that, that's very difficult to understand, but I, I guarantee you, man, if you come and you seek, you seek the Lord, I promise you, God's going to answer every question that you have, and that's, that's what he does. God answers our questions um, when we come and worship. Now, there are some things that we may never know, um, but the thing that we do know is that Jesus saves, that he saves, he, has, he loves us, and has an amazing plan for our life, and I think that's the, that's the point that we communicate to people, that Jesus loves you, he has an amazing plan for your life, and the closer you get to him, the more you start to realize um, what his plan and his purpose is for your life. Now, um, now I want, you to, I want you to go back to John chapter 4, and again, I'm going over this rather fast because I've, I've already taught this, and so I don't have time to, um, to, to, to jump back into this in detail, so go back and listen to 
um, listen to the, the YouTube teaching from last, from last week. Uh, John chapter 4, very familiar passage, the, the woman at the well. And so I won't, I won't read it, um, but the woman at the well, those of you who know this story, know what happened in this particular, particular story. Jesus went through Samaria. He tells the disciples, I need to go through Samaria. So he goes through Samaria. He meets this woman at the well. Uh, he has a conversation with her. Clearly, this woman was spiritual. Clearly, she had some spiritual understanding. Clearly, she had some, some type of doctrinal truth. She knew some things. She, she knew what a prophet was. She knew what worship was. She, she, she knew that, that they wor- her fathers worshiped on mountains. And so there's a lot of things, there's a lot of things about, about church that she knew. Um, but at the same time, at the same time, he encountered her um, and, and she eventually changed her life in that moment. And then she went into the city and she started telling people about this God, this Jesus that she just met. Now, the third person that you're, or the third person that, that you're going to meet is the running. Everybody say the running. The running. She was running. She's running from people. She didn't want to be around people. She don't want to be connected to people. Um, she just made up her mind. I'm just going to do me. I'm not tripping on church. I'm not, I'm not trying to have, I'm not, listen, I'm not trying to bother anybody. I don't want anybody bothering me. I'm going to give you a space and I'm going to take my space. And that's kind of, that's kind of where she was. She was at that point where she just want to deal with people. And there's a lot of people who are like that. People who are running, people who are running are pe- persons like that. They don't want to deal with people. They bag away from people. They stay away. They don't want to hear anything prophetic. They don't want, if you come to them and say, you know, God's got a word for you, man, they take off running. Oh, I want to hear it. Yeah, I just, I don't want, they just, they just don't want to hear it. They, they don't, want, many times when you say, when a person hears that you have a word for them, many times people are like, yeah, you know, what is it? God gave you a word for me? Like, wow. But people who are running, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it because, because they know that once they hear it, they're responsible for what they've heard. <laughs> and so if they don't hear it, they feel like, I'm not responsible because I didn't hear it. I don't know it. And so uh, people who are running will listen to a teaching. If the teaching starts talking about them, they'll turn it off. They'll swipe up or swipe over, depending on what, what social media they're, they're watching. They'll, they'll, they don't want to watch it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want anything. They just they don't want it. So they'll, they'll, what they'll do is they'll, 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 they'll listen to some feel-good church, some feel-good teaching. But anything is pointed directly to them, um, no, they, they don't want to watch it. They don't want to hear it. And so, so this particular lady was like that. She was running. Thank God for her. Um, when Jesus encountered her, she changed her life, man, and she was, she was focused. She was gone. She was running, and she did the thing. She got back in line, and she did the thing that God wanted her to do. Now, listen, you need to know this, that the only time the oil will flow properly is when you are in alignment with God. Being in alignment with God is important. And I know that sometimes as humans, we feel like we can just do it ourselves and we do it our own way. But you got to know, man, your own way is going to get you jacked up. You hear me? Amen. I, I've learned that if you want, it, you want it done right, do it God's way. Has anybody else in the room like me that has learned that lesson, that if you're going to do it, just do it God's way, I promise. It just, it just works out better. Just do it the Lord's way, <laughs> I promise. It just, it just works out better. Just do it God's way. It works out better. All right, go to Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. I pray that you are at least writing these down if you don't have these already in your notes. Um, Mark chapter, Mark chapter 15, Mark chapter 15 verses, verses 29, yeah, verses 29 through 32. Um, so this was Jesus, when Jesus was crucified, verse number 29 says, and those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking, uh, mocking among them themselves with the scribes, said he saved others uh, himself. He cannot save. So, so anyway, they're they're they're, they're kind of laughing at him. They're kind of mocking him. So the the third uh, the fourth type of person that you run into is the antagonistic. That's the person that you run into. They're just. They're just going to have a bunch of negative things to say. They're, they're very negative about God. They're very negative to the things of God. And so those are the ones that kind of, you almost have a bad day when, you, when you're trying to deal with them. You can almost have a bad day talking to them. Now, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of the antagonistic uh, or the antagonist. Don't be afraid of them. Um, you just invite them. If they say, well, no, nah, nah, I'm not going to church, you say, you know what, okay. And then you ask them, say, no, what's your name again? You take their name, make a middle note, go somewhere, type their name in, type their name in your notes page on your phone, and you just, you just start praying for that person. You start praying for them. And if you pray for them, it's not your job to try to convince them or try to convert them, you know, because, because here's what, here's what, here's 
what Scripture teaches. It says that unless I draw them, unless no man can come to the Father unless he does the drawing. Amen? So, 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 so you need to know that every person that you meet, and I need y'all to hear me say this, especially when it comes to evangelism and sharing your faith. You need to know that every person that you, that you meet is in one of three stages. The Bible says that, that, that one plants, another waters, but God gives an increase. Are y'all getting that? So, so when you meet people, in your mind you think that everybody is at increase stage. And the reality is not, everybody's not at increase stage. Sometimes you're meeting a person, you're just at planning stage. That person, they're not ready to, they're not ready to be converted. They're not ready to stop doing what they're doing. They're, they're cool. They're, they're clubbing. They're banging. They're sexing. They're doing all this stuff, and they're not ready to stop. And so they're just at a point, your job is just to sow the seed. Your job is so to see, let them know that Jesus has an amazing plan for your life, man. And, and I promise you, once you get to know the Lord, man, he's going to change your life. And, and that, that's it. Your job is just to sow that seed. Now, so one man plants. Now, you make, and, and the second type of person you're going to run into is somebody that you're watering. Everybody say watering. There are some people that you're watering. The seed's been planted. Somebody else sowed the seed. Maybe their grandmother, granddad, maybe a pastor, or maybe uh, that seed got sowed from, from a minister or, or youth group or youth camp or something. That seed's, that seed's already been sown. And then now you're, you're catching them at the watering place. Everybody say the watering place. Watering place. And so, so one man plants, another waters, and now you're just watering a seed that's already been there. That seed's already in their heart. Uh, the, seed, the seed of God's Word has already been planted into them, and you're just, you're just coming alongside them, and you're just watering that seed. And you're just saying, you just offering a word of encouragement. You're just offering a word of encouragement, and as you offer the word of encouragement, then they, they feel better. Um, you, you, can tell, you can tell that there was a little bit of breakthrough there. It's kind of like King Agrippa. King Agrippa uh, tells Peter, he says, he uh, tells Paul, he says, you almost convinced me to be a Christian. He said, you almost, con <laughs> you almost convinced me to be a Christian. Uh, so, so and, th and there will be people that, that you'll see a little bit of light at the tunnel, and so again, you know, you don't have to like, you don't have to like stress yourself out dealing with individuals, um, but just do it as the Lord leads. Do it as the Lord leads. Um, okay, all right. Now, um, let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock on. Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. Um, now, let, let's, let, let's talk about this. So, um, an antagonistic. I, I, so, I, I heard, I had a very interesting conversation with a very brilliant young lady um, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Yesterday, as a matter of fact. And so, so very brilliant young lady. I went to the mall. And so, and I was talking to her, and then so, you know, I was, I was about to invite her to church. And so she looks at me, and she says, she says to me, she says, she says, you look familiar. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, and I was going to ask her, have you ever spent any time in prison? But I, I didn't. I didn't say that. I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> so uh, so I, did, I didn't say that. So, so, uh, <laughs> I didn't ever been in prison, y'all. Okay. All right, just a joke. Just a joke. All right. All right. So, um, so. And so I was about to ask her to come to church, and she says, she says, I, so she finally, eventually, she said, what's your name? And I said, Eric. And she said, Eric Love? And I said, yes, ma'am. And then she said, I knew that was you. And she, I said, well, how, how, did you, how did you recognize me? And she said, well, I've been to your church before, and plus I have one of your cars. <laughs> See, somebody already given her a car. Okay, so she had a car. Okay, now, um, so, so she, she says this, and then, so um, while I was there, I said, well, I'll just, I'll buy a product or something from her. So, you know, just be a good patron. So um, she said, well, I've got a question for you. And I, I said, I said, okay, shoot. And she said, it's a, it's a Bible question. I said, okay, fine. And then she said, she said, what do, what do you, what do you baptize in? She said, what do you baptize in? And, you know, knee jerk reaction, I was going to say water. <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, I, I said that to her. I said, I said, listen, <laughs> I'm not being funny, but the first thing that came to my mind was water, you know. And then uh, she said, she said, what, what, do, what, do you, what do you baptize in? She said, do you? And I said, well, I just, I baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She said, her eyes got this big. And she said, really? I said, yeah. She said, she said, you don't do it according to Acts 2.38? And I was like, what do you mean do it according to Acts 2.38? And she says, you, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't baptize in the name of Jesus? And I said, well, Jesus, he's the Son, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so she said, she said, you don't, you don't baptize in Jesus. She was like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, you don't, you don't baptize in Acts 2.38? And I was like, well, you know, so am, am, I, am, I, am I wrong? I mean, you know. So now, 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 now because I studied this stuff, I, I knew where she was going. I knew how to answer the question. So, so go, there real, go there with me real quick. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you just how this can happen. So go to Acts 2.38. Just, just roll over to Acts 2.38, 2.38 real quick. Um, and so her point, her point was valid. Her point was valid, you know. Um, go to Acts, Acts 2.38. 
Y'all see it? W- what does it say? Uh-huh. Be baptized what? In the name of Jesus Christ for the mission of sins, right? Okay, so, so she was like, she was like, and I, I said, well, why do, why do you feel like we have to do it that way? And, of course, her answer was because the Bible said it. Because the Bible said it. But the Bible told us to do it that way. And I said, well, I said, so when I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you, you're, you're saying that I'm doing it wrong? And she said, well, I didn't say you're doing it wrong. The Bible says you're doing it wrong. And I was like, huh. And so, you know, and so some, something happened, and uh, another customer walked up, and I had to, I walked off, but, but, but I, what I, what I, what I'm, what I hope to go back and, and help her to understand is, is that, is that they're, 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 they're people who, who, who are so focused on doing it that one way miss, miss the whole picture. They, they miss the whole point. Let, 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 me, let me prove it to you. Let me prove, go to Matthew chapter 28. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Let me, let me prove it to you. Matthew chapter 28. Go to Matthew chapter 28. Go there real quick. Matthew chapter 28, look at verse number 19. Look at verse number 19. Now, what did Jesus say? Read it. What does it say? Go ye therefore, do what? Make disciples, do what? Uh Uh-huh. Doing what? In the name of the what? (laughs) Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, now this is what Jesus said. So, if I'm going to pick one between Peter and Jesus, I'm probably, I'm, I'm probably going to pick and do it the way Jesus told me to do it, right? Okay. So, okay, okay. But, but, but th- there's, a, there's actually a name for, for that, type of, that type of thinking. But, um, but it probably indicates, what, what, what this is indicating where, where Peter said, okay, baptize in the name of Jesus. Jesus said baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's probably indicate, well, because the Bible doesn't condi- contradict itself. It's not contradictory. Many people think it is, but the Bible doesn't contradict itself. This probably indicates that the specific formula used is not as important as the meaning. It's the meaning by which we are baptized. So sometimes people get caught up in words, and sometimes when, when you're out hanging out with people, you know, or, or you're, you're, you're witnessing the people, sometimes people will bring up, thought, bring up things like that. Like, don't get caught up in that. And don't, don't ever try to answer a question that you don't know. If you don't know, just say, you know what, I, I really don't know that I haven't studied that, you know, but here's what I do know. And always, always bring them back because sometimes people try to take you off track, but always bring them back. Here's what I do know. You know what, I, I, I'm, I'm really, not, really not as versed, uh, well versed on that as I would like to be, but here's what I do know. I know that Jesus has an amazing plan for your life, and the closer you get to him, I promise you, man, your life, your life will change. Your life will significantly change you know, the closer you get to him. And so always bring them back. Don't let them, don't let them carry you off and carry off in a deep conversation because you'll be standing there for hours and they'll get you so confused uh, because I promise you, they've studied probably better than, they, listen, they've studied wrong better than you studied right. Woo, that was cool. <laughs> Woo, that was gangster right there. Y'all better get that. Yeah. <laughs> what did I just say? They've studied wrong better than you've studied right, and you better believe that. So, so they they are wrong, and they they don't they realize they're wrong, but they've studied wrong better than you've studied right. And so, don't don't let them drag you off into conversations that that you're not prepared for. Uh, don't do that. Just you, so that means that you need to study. You need to under, you need to know what you believe and why you believe what you believe. I think Paul told Timothy. He said he said you need to be prepared uh, to give a defense for which for the hope that you have. Be prepared, you know, to defend the hope that that you have in Jesus Christ, and that's important. Um, and again, you don't have to know the whole Bible. Just, just know what you know and, and tell people what you know. And if you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know that. You, you're, not, you're, not, you're not talking to people because, you, because you're a scholar. You're talking to people because Jesus changed your life. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay. All right. So let's rock. All right. So, um, um, so okay. L- uh, l- let me, let me, let me, let me, I want to do something. I want to do something. I want to do something. Um, I, need a, I need a volunteer. I need volunteer. Yeah. Come, come here. You, you, come up here. Come up here. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't get scared. Yeah, yeah, don't get scared. Okay. I, I got a volunteer. Okay. You, 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 are, you are a good volunteer. Are you nervous? Reluctant? But you're not, you're not, you're not nervous, though. You, you're not nervous, though? Okay. Okay. All I want you to do, all I want you to do is read that. Don't read it out loud. Just read it to yourself. Read it to yourself, and I want you to respond based upon what you read. I want you to read it, and I just want you to respond based upon what you read.
No, no, don't, don't just respond based upon what you read. You read it? And she's responding based upon what she read. Read, read it again. Okay. All right. Open it up. She read it. She responded. What's in it? You got some money. You you got some money. I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's that's a fair question. <laughs> I, I guess you don't know the big side of yet unless you know it's yours, right? That, that's yeah, huh? No, what what's it say on the envelope? Uh, uh, no, no, I'm talking the envelope on the envelope. Okay, so what does that mean? What's that mean? <laughs> uh, what you doing with it? <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, take this. Take this. Now, I, I want you, I want you to I want you to read this. Just just read it. Read it in the microphone. There are two more free gifts in the seat pockets in this room, free to whoever will search for them. Okay, we got one. <laughs> we got one. Okay, we got them. So we, they've got them. They got them. Y'all give them a hand. Give them a hand. Okay. So <laughs> Thank you. That's it. All right, keep that. That's yours. Congratulations. Okay, now, how long, how long had those free gifts been in here? Huh? At least, at least ever since you got here. Here's my question. Did you know it was in here? Wow. Wow. So, so they were in here. Some of you were seated right in front of it. Oh, yeah, uh, it was right in front of you. Okay, so the free gifts was in here the whole time. You didn't know it. Now, here's my question. Here's my question. It was in here. You didn't know it. How did you learn about the free gift? How did you learn about it? Say what now? Somebody spoke it. Say again. Listening, being in the right place. But, but you learned about the free gift through the word of mouth. So it was communicated to you verbally that there was a free gift in the room. Some of y'all were acting real cool, act like you didn't need any money. <laughs> Some people left their Bible, you hear me? But had she not communicated what she read, had she kept hers to herself, had she read that it was other gifts in here and decided that she wasn't going to tell anybody, I'm preaching better than y'all giving me credit for already. If she had decided that she was just going to keep it to herself, you guys would have got up and walked out, and you were, and the, the two of you who received, you, you, you wouldn't have received the thing that maybe God had planned for you. 
the gospel was designed to be communicated by word of mouth. Glory to God. So when God has given you a free gift, you receive the free gift of salvation. God is saying, now that you've received the gift, tell somebody else where you found the gift. Go tell somebody else that there's some more gifts available. That, there, that God still has a, that God, that God changed my life. That God gave me the free gift of salvation. And God has the same, another free gift prepared for you. And you tell somebody, man, God has an amazing gift for you. When, when, when she read, all she did was read it. All she said was, there's, a, there's two more gifts in here. Do you know why you responded? Because you saw the evidence. You saw that you saw how her face changed. She went from somebody who was a little bit timid and kind of a little bit worried about what was being up here until she got to the point where, listen, and she knew how to fold it. She folded it, slipped it in there. <laughs> slipped it. She knew where to put it. But once you saw that there was a change in her life, it didn't take much. She didn't even tell you to look. She said anybody who will look might find it. Knock and the door. If you seek, ooh, that's good in here. You seek, you shall find. And all she said, if you seek for it, you'll find it. And there were some people in here who sought for it, and they find Now, the people that sought for it, they didn't have to go far. They didn't have to go far to find it. It's been in the room. Matt, watch this. Many of you passed right by it just to know what it was. There's so many people in the world that are passing right by salvation. They're passing by it all the time. And watch this. They're passing by you, and you know the free gift. You've experienced the free gift. They pass right by you, and you don't tell people where you found the gift. That's what evangelism is. Evangelism is, 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 is one beggar telling another beggar where he found the bread. And that's what God is calling us to do. All right. All right. So, so let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Number one. So, so, so I'm going to give you three points, then we'll go to the four spiritual laws, and I'm going to try to do it in 15 minutes. Okay. Number one. Number one. Write this down. Write this down. Prepare your heart and your mind in advance. Prepare your heart and mind in advance when you're going to evangelize, when you're going to the mall, you're going to the grocery store. Go and prepare your hearts. Prepare your heart. Prepare your mind. I had to learn to do that. I had to learn to do that because that was, that was a season in my life, season in my life where I didn't want to deal with people. When I, when I left church, I, I disconnected with people. Now, I, I know that's wrong. Um, I know now that that's wrong, so I don't do it anymore. Now when I'm going to a uh, place like that, now my heart's open. I pray uh, before I go. No matter where I am, I just say, okay, Lord, if you need to use me, I'm ready. So, hey, so prepare early. So prepare early and pray. Prepare early and pray. So you guys get that. When you get up in the morning, um, know that. Know that you are called to be an evangelist and you don't get to take a day off. You're called to be an evangelist and you don't get to take a day off. It's just who we are. Sometimes it's through a phone call. Sometimes a, 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 one, one of a close friend might call you and you may have to, you may have to witness to them on the phone. I, th I know that many of, you guys are, many of you guys witness on the phone all the time. You do it all the time. It's just that we've got to start preparing our hearts for that, preparing our hearts. I was talking to Bruce today. Raise your hand, Bruce. Bruce said, man, I need some more cards. Bruce and I gave out all my cards. <laughs> he says, and we, matter of fact, we've already ordered some more for those of you who are, who are uh, working adamantly and you're giving those cards out. So thank you, those of you that are working. Those of you that are not, come on, let's get on it. Um, so no, B, draw, draw a line in the sand. Draw a line in the sand. Remember that. Write that down. Draw a line in the sand. You know what that means? That means that, that I'm, I'm not going to let you carry me to a place that I'm not willing to go. I'm not going to have a conversation with you that I know that's, that's too deep for me. I've got this line in the sand, and this, this is where I'm going. And I'm not going to I'm not going to get into I'm not going to get into an argumentative conversation with you because that's that's unfruitful. It's unfruitful for me, for you and everybody who's listening. I'm not going to do that. And so you draw that line of sand I'm, and I'm, I'm not passing this. I'm not crossing this line. I'm not having that conversation with you. I'm not having a conversation with you about doctrine. Um, I'm not going into that. I'm not going into a whole big conversation about theology. That's 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 not that's not what I'm here to do. I'm just I'm just trying to invite you to church. I'm just trying to invite you to church. And that's it. So we, we don't we don't get caught up in that. 
All right. Um, and lastly, operate in courage. That's important. I'll write that down. Operate in courage. Operate in courage. So, so if you're going to evangelize, if you're going to talk to people, if you're going to go out and witness, you've you got to have some courage. You've got to be willing to walk up to people and have a conversation with people. You've got to be willing to walk. Because sometimes people will be walking past the Holy Spirit will quicken you and say, say stop that person and, and ask them where they go to church. Or have a conversation with them. And you'll stop them and you have that conversation. You've got to operate in courage. And that's important. It's important because you're just talking to people. They're just, they're, they're human. They're human. You know, I, I, as a matter of fact, matter of fact, I, 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 I get joy from pe- speaking to people who don't think that I'm going to speak. I get joy. I get joy in that because it's like you're walking toward them. They're not looking at you, you know. And so, especially, especially in that tunnel in the mall, going to the bathroom, <laughs> like people don't look at you in that tunnel, Jack. <laughs> they don't look at you in that tunnel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, in that tunnel, they're be looking outside the wall, you know. Yeah, so they look at you in that tunnel. Uh, so, but, but, I, but I've learned, I just, I just speak to people, and I, I speak to people who don't think that I'm going to speak to them, and it's amazing. I speak to them. You know, I, I, I went to, I stopped at McDonald's a couple of days ago to get some, get a, you know, a little something to eat, some breakfast or something, and, uh, and there was two elderly gentlemen there, and, um, and so as I walked past them, I could see that they, they both kind of looked off, and I said, how are you gentlemen doing today? They were like, oh, oh, we're doing good. They didn't think I was going to speak. But I, I've just learned, I've learned to speak to them, hold a conversation with them, and just kind of see where it goes and just see what the Lord does. All right. So operate in courage. All right. Number two, number two, change your focus. Number two, change your focus. Change your focus. Focus on the garden and not the harvest. Focus on the garden, not the harvest. In other words, in other words, when my, when my granddaddy, when my granddad would go out and he'd plant a garden, uh, one of the things that he taught us, he said, son, just because you plant the seed today doesn't mean, it, doesn't mean you're going to you're gonna get a harvest. We're planting in hopes to get a harvest, but the harvest may not come. And so he helped us to understand that, yeah, go ahead and plant the seed. Go ahead and do that. Plant the seed. But just know that, that God is the one that brings the harvest. So in other words, when you're talking to people, they may or may not change their lives right away. Their life may not change right away. It may not happen right then. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. Because my job is just to plant the seed. That's what I'm doing. I'm simply going gonna, gonna to plant the seed, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let God I'm gonna let God water. I'm going to let God provide, uh, bring the harvest. And that's what we do. We just plant the seed. That's our job. We're just going to sow the seed, and we're going to focus on the garden. We're going to focus on what's in front of us. We're going to focus on what's right in front of us, the people that are right in front of us, because that becomes the garden, and that becomes our focal point. And so, you know, my, my job is to teach. That's my job. This is the garden. I'm going to teach. I'm going to teach. I'm going to, I'm going to, because I told you guys before, I give you the word in seed form. I give you the word in seed form. It's your job to take that seed and to plant that seed into the soil of your heart. How do you do that? By meditating on it. When you meditate on that word day and night, what happens to that word, that word sinks into the soil of your heart, and that word starts to have an impact on your life. Let me say that again. When you meditate on the word, it sinks into the soil of your heart, and it starts to have an impact on your life. And that's what you want. You want to live a life where, where the word of God is having an impact, having a strong impact on your life, where it starts to make a difference in your life. Okay, now uh, B, test the field by asking questions. Test the field by asking questions. So when you're talking to people or you're witnessing to somebody, just start, just ask them questions. Ask them questions. Here's, here's two questions that, that I like to ask, and sometimes I'll, I'll ask them and, you know, I'll, 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 I'll variate them, you know, um, occasionally. So number one is if you could have a miracle from God, what would you ask for? If you could have a miracle from God, what would you ask for? And sometimes just ask the person that. Man, if God could work a miracle for you, man, what would you ask God for? And when you ask, when you ask people that, um, the, the guards lower. The guards come down, and so they think, man, if God could work a miracle for me, yeah, if God could work a miracle for you, man, what would you ask God for? And, let's, and just, just give them a chance to talk. Just let them talk. Let them share with you what's on their heart. Let them share with you, you know, the thing, that, the thing that's heaviest in their heart, because typically what will happen is the thing that's heaviest in their heart will come up. Now, now you have people that say things, well, man, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, praying, I'm praying for a million dollars. If God could work a miracle for me, I, I, I'll pray for a million dollars. My next question is, what would you do with it? What would you do it? I'm just trying to hear your heart. I'm trying to hear what, what would you do. If God gave a million dollars, what, what, what's the first thing that you do? And I just, just talk to them. Just talk to them, have a conversation with them. Let them talk for a minute and say, man, you know what? Man, I, I believe God really wants to bless you. Now, I can't guarantee that God's going to bless you a million dollars, but I know that God wants to bless you. And, man, listen. And then and here's the second question. Here's the second question. So when I talk about that, then my second question is, are you close to God or do you feel like you're far from him? Are you close to God or do you feel like you're far from him? So when you ask that question, are you close to God, you feel like you're far from it, and you let them tell you where they are. Let them tell you how, you know, well, I feel like I'm close to God, and how I'm, I'm kind of far from God. And that gives you an amazing opportunity to say to them, well, th- this, is a, this, is, this is an optimum chance for you to get close to God. Because, because I believe that, I don't think it's an accident that we're meeting. I don't think it's an accident that I'm here with you right now. I don't think it's an accident. I think that God uh, has purposed us to meet right now, and God, and God wants you to closer to him. One of the ways you do that is you start attending a church. 
Now, I'm not asking you to come join the church. I just want you to come visit. I just want you to just come see. Just come experience the culture. Experience, just experience the worship there. Just experience the worship. Just come, and I want you just to come and hang out with us. Amen. So, y'all got it? Y'all got that, that far? All right. Number three. Here's number three. Three, have some information. Have some information. You need to know something. Have some information. Know your service times. Know your pastor's name. <laughs> <laughs> know your pastor's name. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how many people, when, when I ask them, what church you go to? Tell me the name of the church. They can't remember the name. What's the pastor's name? And they, they cannot remember their pastor's name. You, you know, and I said, you ain't been to church in a while, have you? You know, you ain't been to church in a while. Um, so, so have some information. Know the service times. Um, you, you need to know that. Know, know the church's cell phone number. Or, or know the church's, not cell phone, know the church's um, Telephone number. Know the know the 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 web the website the web address. There's some things that you need to know about the church about the ministry. You need to know that. You need to know how. Tell them how they can get connected. How they can get connected. Say, man, listen. There's a QR. You can go to our website, or when you get to church, there's a QR code on the seat pocket in front of you. Just scan that QR code, man, and one of our ambassadors will get in contact with you and tell you everything that you need to know. So there, there's just some there's just some basic common knowledge things that that you need to know um, as you are going out and as you are communicating with people. Just just know. Have some information. If you have to write some things down, if you have to write these numbers down, if you have to put it on the message page on your phone, if you have to keep one of these cards for yourself. And speaking of these cards, let me, let me talk about these cards just for a moment. Listen, so I'm, I bought this, this neat little case. I bought it off Amazon. I think it cost six bucks. Um, so so if, if, you, if you have some invite cards, make sure you have something that you can put them in to protect them. Um, because if you drop them in the bottom of your purse, keep them in your, you know, and keep them in your wallet, I mean, keep them in your pocket. Sometimes they can get frazzled, they can get damaged or, or bent up. And so you want to give them about it. You want to give about a, a raggedy card. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah, y'all want to give somebody the cards all tore up, beat up. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, B- because because listen, listen to this. I, I I tell, listen, I tell some of my pastor friends all the time, your sign is a sign. You get it. Y'all get it. Yeah, your sign is a sign. <laughs> yeah, I, I can tell I can tell about what's going on in the, in the church or what's happening outside that church. Your sign is a sign. Amen. Uh, uh, so, so, so do something. Put them in a plastic bag. Wrap them up. Do something like grandma used to do. Yeah, put it, yeah, do something. Yeah, keep them, yeah, keep them so fresh and so clean, clean. That, that's, all, that's, all, that's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, keep them fresh. All right. Okay. All right. Four spiritual laws. Five minutes. Let's rock. Four spiritual laws. Let's see if I can get this done. If I get this done in five minutes. Uh, four spiritual laws. So remember that, uh, so I'm going to give it, and some of these are kind of long. You may have to take a picture of them, and that's fine. I don't, I don't mind that. Take a picture of them. Some of these are long. But, but, but this, is, this is your mindset. This is, a, this is the thing you have to have in your heart as you're communicating to people. Number one is that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And you've heard me say that over and over and over again. So as you're talking to people, just share that with them. God loves you and has a amazing plan for your life. That's, that, that's point number one. And they need to know that. They need to know that. They need to have that in their heart, that God loves you as an amazing plan for your life. And you need to say that. You say that over and over and become um, very repetitious with it. Learn how to say that so that it flows well off of your lips. You need to maybe stand in the mirror and, and just kind of rehearse that. You know, God loves you as an amazing plan for your life. And say that with conviction because, because had it not been for God, I wouldn't be here today. Had it not been for God, you wouldn't be here today. You know, most of you, or probably all of you at this point know that God loves you and that he has a plan for your life and that God wants to lead us and guide us to the plan that he has for us. His thoughts toward us are good and out of evil to bring us to an expected end. There's an expected end that, that God has for us. All right. Um, um, number two, here, here's, here's a long one, but just, just rock with me. Humanity is tainted by sin and is therefore separated from God. As a result, we cannot know God's wonderful plan for our lives. So God has a wonderful plan, but when you're separated from God, you can't know that plan. God has a plan, but when you're separated from God, you can't know that plan. And you need to, and, and, and that's, a part of that, that's a part of the piece that we communicate. God has an amazing plan, but when you're separated from God, you can't, you can't know the plan that he has for you because you're separated from him. And so, and so now you're kind of, you're kind of, you're talking to people, you, 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 um, you're participating in the ministry of reconciliation because you're trying to reconcile that individual back to Christ. And that's important. Humanity is tainted by sin and therefore separated from God because sin cannot live in the presence of God, the holy presence of God. As a result, we cannot know God's wonderful plan for our lives. 
and we tell a person, we, so as you're communicating to people, just say, listen, man, because, uh, because you're separated from God, when you ask them, do you feel like you're close to God, you feel like you're far away from Him, they say, well, I feel like I'm kind of far away from God right now, and just say, listen, when you're far away from God, man, it becomes more, it's, it's difficult to know God's plan for your life when you, the further you move away from Him. And so a- after a while, you're just kind of drifting. You're kind of out there. You're kind of out there by yourself, and it's very difficult to know God's perfect plan for your life because you're drifting away from Him. All right, number three. Number three. Jot this down. Number three. Here it is. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for our sin. If I'm going too fast, this will be this will be online tonight on Facebook tonight, and it'll be in our YouTube um, on our YouTube page as well, probably by morning or or sometime tomorrow. I'll be on our YouTube. All right. Number three. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for our sin. Through Jesus Christ. We can have our sins forgiven and restore a right relationship with God. That's, that's, that's important. That's important. Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only provision for sin. You can't buy your way out. You can't sing your way out. You can't work your way out. Jesus Christ is the only provision for sin. And through Jesus Christ, we find that substitutionary, that substitutionary death. And, and through that, we now have the right to be with God again. We have, we're restored to that right relationship with God. He's the only way. And that's what you communicate to people. Jesus Christ is the only way. He's the only way. You know, people, you know, a lot of people think that there's a lot of different ways to get to heaven. And, and yeah, there, there's, a, there, 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 there's a lot of, there's a lot of roads. Let me say this. There's a lot of roads that take you to Jesus. But there's only one road that takes you to heaven. Does that make sense? A lot of roads take you to Jesus. So a lot of people come a lot of different ways to get to Jesus. But no man coming to the Father. Unless he goes through Jesus. Does that make sense? So when people say, well, I can go to, I can get to heaven this way. And I, you know, no, nah, no, nah, the Bible says you come any other way. You come as a thief, as a thief or a robber. Yeah, you're not coming any other way. You, you've got, still got to go by Jesus. So when people try to discredit or discount Jesus, listen, you've got to go back and read the scriptures again. Because the Bible is clear about that. The Bible is clear. Very, very clear about that. All right. And lastly, lastly, here it is. Lastly, we must put our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior in order to receive the gift of salvation and know God's wonderful plan for our lives. There it is. It's, it's, all, it's all neatly packaged. The four spiritual laws, very amazing. God loves us, has a wonderful plan. Humanity is tainted by sin, therefore separated from God. We can't know the plan. Jesus Christ is the only provision for sin. Through him, our sins are forgiven, restored to right relationship. And number four, we must place our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior in order to receive the gift of salvation and know God's wonderful plan for our life. That, that those are the four spiritual laws. Learn those laws. Get those laws in your heart. And so as you're, as you're communicating with people, learn these laws. Get these laws in your heart. Talk about them. Say them. Uh, put, them on, put them on your dashboard. Put them on, you know, put them on your phone. Uh, uh, um, uh, meditate on these four laws. Get these laws in your heart. So when you're communicating to people, this is what we're communicating. This is what we're communicating. We're not trying to sell our church. We're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not try, we're not trying to sell our church. We're not trying to, you know, uh, get the whole world to come to this church. That's not it. No, no, we want you to have a relationship. I don't care what church, I mean, I, I want you to go to a healthy church. Let me say that. I'm not going to say I don't care what church you go to. I want you to go to a healthy church. I want you to be part of a healthy church, a church that's, that's a Bible teaching church. That, that's important. That's important. But ultimately, I want your life changed. I want you to experience what I've experienced. I found $20 behind the seat back. I want you to find $20 behind the seat back. Amen? I mean, that was figurative. Y'all didn't catch it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. All right. Some of y'all got it. All right. So, so check this out. Last scripture. Don't turn. I want you to see it on the screen. John chapter 4, verse 28. You see what happened? What happened? Say what now? Well, what happened? She received. Uh huh. That's right. Her, her life was changed. Her life was changed. And after her life was changed, she left her water pot. Oh, that blessed me so much. That blessed me so much. The very thing that she thought she needed, the very thing that she thought she went there to do. Hallelujah. She left her water pot. She left it. In the middle of the day, the heat of the day, she left her water pot. She left it. So, so I, I think it's so amazing that, that the Bible would even record that. It could have just said that, that she went into the city and started talking. 
But this whole leaving the water pot thing was so amazing because because the, the, the water pot represented weight. That she had been carrying. Glory to God. And she wasn't carrying this weight for herself. She was carrying the weight for somebody who really didn't care much about her. But one encounter with Jesus changed her life so much that she left her water pots. She went back into the city. And what did she say? <laughs> she said, come see it. Imagine. Imagine how. Y'all tell me, y'all a great class. Uh, y'all were. <laughs> now y'all are, y'all are, y'all are, y'all are. But what would it take? What would, a, what would a person, a woman in this particular instance, have to exhibit in order for an entire city to go at her word to meet the man that she was talking about. What would she have to exhibit? Joy? Her what? Her speech changed? What else? Lifestyle? They could tell something about her lifestyle change. What else? Her what? Her what? Her courage? Courage, yeah, because she wasn't talking to people. <laughs> Facial expression changed. Say what now? They saw a light in her. Why you you been listening to my teaching, then? <laughs> Say what? They were wondering where the water was. <laughs> she didn't come back with that water this time. Woo! Boy, you about to say, see, you might be on to something. Yeah, you're a poet and don't know it. But they, they probably watched her year after year after year after year carry that same pot year after year after year. They said, there she goes. They probably could set their clock by her. There's, there she goes. There she goes again. But this time, she comes back. This time, she don't have that water pot. Yeah. <laughs> Charles said she's been drinking something else this time. <laughs> she's got some living water. There, 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 there's, some, there's something different about her. She came back different. Because when, when you truly encounter Jesus, you cannot stay the same. I'm talking about when you have a real encounter with him. I'm talking about when you come face to face with your own humanity or, or, or when, you, when your back was up against the wall. Some of, you, some, of you, some of you know God through tragedy. You know God through hardships and hard times. Because if it wasn't for the hard time, you wouldn't know how good God was. You wouldn't know that God could make a way. You wouldn't know that God was a provider if you've never had need. Some of you know God will make a way because you, there were some situations in your life where you needed a way made and you know that God is real. I don't know what that means for you. I don't know when you, when, listen, here's my question for you. When did you learn that God was real? When, tell, talk. When did you learn that he was real? Just start saying it. When? Some of y'all got to think back that far. When did you learn? Come on. When when did you really learn that God was real? Yes, ma'am. She was divorced, left with five kids by herself. And what, what did God do for you? Miracles after miracles. That's what I'm talking about. What do you do when what do you do when somebody walks away from you, leave you with five kids? And then God shows up. 
You, can, you can't sit and not tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord when God is taking care of you like that. Yes, yes ma'am. When, when, when did you learn that God was real? The night just sounded like, Miss, miss, miss uh, hold on, hold on. Come, come here, come up here. You, you, yeah, you, one of y'all, which one of y'all run the fastest? She does. Yeah, take her there, take her there. Yeah. I learned it, and, and, and this is a testimony, and uh -huh. I've been keeping it, and I've been keeping it. About a little more than five years ago, my son was sentenced to 75 years in prison for wow. murder. And I don't look like what I've been through or what I'm going through. But God kept me. The night that I learned, I literally just almost lost it. And I stood up in front of my mirror. I mean, I was, I was just out of it. I was like a crazy person. I was just that thin line. And I looked in the mirror, and a voice said, Fool, you forgot who you know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I helped him with that. She said, yeah, she said, the Lord said, you said he said, Fool? Fool, you forgot who you know, and she hadn't looked back yet. Somebody else, because see, if, if you don't, if, if you've never had a child in trouble, that type of trouble, that get that type of sentence, you have no idea what that what what, what she just said. You don't even understand how that that people you can, there's a there is a stress level that will cause you to lose your mind. That you'll snap. There's a stress level. There's a level that you can reach that your brain will just snap. Yes, sir. Um, the night, um, uh, March the 4th of 2000, um, got stopped by the police, and they planted something on me and went to jail, and God told me not to worry about nothing, but I was worried, and... was led to read some scriptures from an older guy that I pushed away twice, and then the third time I listened to him. Mm -hmm. And once I got finished reading the scripture, the jailer was calling my name mm -hmm. to, to go home. And every time I go back to Shreveport now to um, go back to the Bells, I'm Brothers, but office or nowhere is that it's not it's not even there. It's no totally gone. I mean, totally it's totally fun. gone. Yeah, no record. Don't even know where the um. I mean, it's not even no building there. Even the building gone. Yeah. Now get my microphone. <laughs> Do you have one? Even the building gone. Between the year two thousand five. All the way up to 2007, I had like a light nervous breakdown, and I was comf I was thinking about taking my own life, mm -hmm. and God audibly spoke to me yeah. because I had called out to Him because I said, God, if there is no help from if you don't help me, there is there's no help for me, and um, He began to speak to me. You know, it's one thing to know of God, sure. and then it's another thing. When he come real in your life, yeah. I will, I've been in the church all my life, but just, you know, I, traditional Baptist, whatever. But I even in that time where I didn't even really have a mind to think of my own and, you know, everything around me was, you know, I just was really giving up on life. Yeah. And when God spoke to me, he said, do you trust me? Mm that you're already at the bottom. Do you trust me enough to, to um, trust in me to bring you up and out? And ever since then, God is so real in my life yeah. because if he wouldn't have stepped in, I was going to really take my life. Wow. wow. And I just wow. thank God for what he is in my life. Yeah, yeah. I literally live, I live this life. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thank God for sparing my life and filling me with the Holy Ghost and everything he has done for me. I don't look like what I've been through. <laughs> I hear your voice change, Reverend. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> oh, you got to say it? Okay. 
Now, you know, it's got to be good when the camera folks start talking. <laughs> when I first came to uh, New Birth, I had a kind of like a stroke. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. Remember? Wow. I do. And I had to come on stage because it ended up having, it happened again. And my whole brain shut down. And I lost function on my right side. It happened again because, like that lady at the well, I had I had multiple pots. Mm. Sometimes, even after I got better, wow. God was like, you know, He'll sit you down and shut you up because He say you too loud in your own mind. You're not even listening to me. That's good. But sometimes we go back to that well, pick that same pot up. Wow. He'll try to sit you down again. Yeah. He didn't take my, because I had to learn how to walk and talk. But I kept going back to that pot because I'm. St I'm superwoman. I have to do it. God say, no, you don't have to do it. You bring it to me and let me do it. Wow. Go back, pick the pot up again. This last time, a couple years ago, I was here. This is before I became really involved in the church. I literally had poured out all my medication because God already knew what was going to happen. I hid my car, went into a storage building. I couldn't lock it because I was on the inside. And every pill that I had, thank God, because he already knew, I took every pill that I had. Wow. But it wouldn't kill me. It just made me really sick. And then God was like, Denise, like I became in minister's college. I wasn't expecting to do that. I just wanted to get closer because I was so far. And not for the stuff that I was doing. It's because I felt I did so much because I didn't feel loved. And God was like, like she said, fool, I've been loving you since day one. <laughs> Amen. Why are you trying to overdo, overstep, just like with the young man this past summer? You, I, I always was trying to do more than what God was placing me to do. And then those pots, I'm more with the pots. So now I have no more anxiety, no more depression. God said, put them pots, them pots are sitting. I don't know where them pots are now. That's what I'm talking about. I don't have the pots no more. There's no more depression. Amen. I'm still helping. Because I love to do it, but now I'm helping in a way that God wants me to help, not in a way that I'm supposed to be helping. God said, you were doing what you thought you wanted to do, yeah. not what I wanted you to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I put my pots down. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> come on. Come on, girl. It was the year 2017, 2018. I was all over the place. I was in such a dark place, so dark. And I was in Louisiana with this girl I used to hang with. And I was just sitting in the car. I was drunk. And I was just sitting in the car, and I just said, God, I can't keep living like this. I'm tired of living like this. And something whispered in my ear and was like, Kier, that is not your friend. The next day, we ended up getting into a fight. And ever since then, me and her is no longer friends. And then I felt so alone. I just felt so alone. And I was still in the dark place, 2018. And then come April, I found out I was pregnant. I just really thought I just messed up my whole life. I'm not even going to lie. I thought I messed up my whole life. Then when I heard my son heartbeat, God told me this was my purpose. My son is my purpose to get on the right path. So that's how I know God is real. Hey Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, y'all shouldn't have started now. Okay, so way back when I was a single parent, I had two kids. Um, I was in San Antonio by myself and here comes summertime, and I don't have nobody watch my kids, and I don't let people watch my kids. So I had to ship them off to Cleveland where my mama was, and when I shipped them off there, here come, it's time for them to come back. I don't have no money. I don't have a dime to bring my children back. So at that time, I was in church, and then we were doing Wednesday nights, and we were doing Saturday night prayer. I think I spent five out of seven days at church. And that night that we had prayer, we were all in a circle praying. I didn't say one word. You know, they asked for prayer requests, and I didn't say one word. Because I heard God say, you know, I was old. I mean, I was young. 
and now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his, his seed begging bread. And I clung to that that whole time I was a single mother. So I sat there, and I prayed for everybody in that circle like we pray, and, I, you, and the whole time I didn't say one word. At the end of the prayer, one of the sisters said, Sister Zena, her name is, she said, something's wrong. I think we need to take up a collection for Berlita. I just looked at her. She said, something's not right. Let's take up a collection. She started taking up money from everybody, and it was just enough money for, go, for me to go get my baby. Wow. That wow. still gives me chills to this day, yeah. y'all. Yeah. That, Amen. That was God. Amen. 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 Yeah, we got, we got nothing in the back, y'all. Yeah. Please focus your attention. Stay real. Okay, so I was working at, um, I've been crying because y'all just been blessing me. But um, I was working at Mardell, and I had, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I had my SUV to lock the engine to lock up because the oil had gotten low. Just running, running, forgot, get your oil changed. The oil had ran low. The engine locked up. We didn't have the money to go get a new car. We had the money to get the engine fixed. So what I ended up doing, I said, I had a, a previous church we were going to. A lady said, her washing machine broke down. She went and laid hands on it, and it just started working again. And I said, that's about the craziest thing I ever heard. But I believe God can do anything, so I'm going to go out here, and I'm going to lay hands on this car. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, God, if, if, if you can do it, <laughs> I, I really appreciate it because if any of y'all have ever had engine issues, that's expensive to fix. So I went outside. I sat in the car, and I thought, this is real crazy. I hope my neighbors ain't watching. I'm going to lay my hands on the dashboard, and I'm just going to pray, Lord, do it. <laughs> and I sat there, and I, I laid my hands, and I prayed, Lord, do it. And I took the key, and I'm thinking, Sharice, you crazy, but okay. Took the key. I turned it, and nothing happened. And I said, man. Let me try it again. I put my hands on there, and I said, okay, Lord. I, so I started to think real hard, like, Lord, like, I really need you to come through because this engine ain't doing nothing. There's no oil. I put my hands on it, and I said, Lord, please <laughs> just make it work. I looked. I took the key. I turned the ignition. It said, Rick. I said, whoo. <laughs> okay, and I'm in the car doing this because y'all know I get excited. I was like, oh, okay, he finna do it. I'm rubbing the steering wheel. Come on, baby, come on. I said, Lord, I just need a little bit more. Just please do it. Just, just, just let it work. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking to him like I'm talking to him, right? And I put my hands on the steering wheel, and I said, Lord, just let it crank. Please, Lord, let it crank. Just let it crank. I took the key, and I stuck it in there, and I said, in Jesus' name, let it crank. And I turned that key, and that bad boy started right on up. Yeah, yeah. And I got out the car, and I ran down my driveway. <laughs> I ran back up. I think I turned. I almost fell. I was jumping and screaming. I ran in the house. I told my husband, I said, baby, the car is working. He was like, what? I said, yes. He said, let me put some oil in it. <laughs> and he put some oil in it, and we did not have to get anything fixed. Wow. On that wow. car. Wow. As wow. crazy as that sounds, it, it took that and a whole lot of other stories for me to know without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, yeah. Even the smallest, most impossible things that don't even seem spiritual things. Yeah. God can do it. Yeah. And he is so real that if that's what you need to know that he's real, he'll do it so that you'll know that he's real. Come on, man. Come on. Y'all give God some. Come on. Um, a few years ago, I was in a lot of pain, and I didn't know why. 24-7, I was hurting. And I went to a lot of doctors here. Nobody could tell me what was wrong. My son came down from Houston, took me to this specialist. And when I got there, the doctor came in. He was an older guy. He, his, one of his legs was gone, and he could barely move. I said, Lord, this man in worse shape than I am. I said, how he going to help me <laughs> judging? But this man, he told me, mm. mm. This 
man told me everything that was wrong with me without even examining me. Mm. And he said, from your symptoms, Miss Woods, he said, it sounds like you have fibromyalgia. I never heard of that. I heard it, y'all, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I was in pain. Wow. I could not even stand the sheets that touched me. Wow. When the sheets touched me, I would be screaming for my husband to come take them off. Wow. That's how bad the pain, because it's a nerve disease. Yeah. And so you got nerves all over your body. And I didn't know what, and this, my, they had a new medicine. And he said, Miss Wood, I want you to try this. Oh, I'm sorry. I backed up and I asked before I went, I said, Lord, let this man tell me what's wrong with me. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know. And nobody here in Long Beach, Texas can tell me. And this man told me, y'all, before he even examined me, everything. He said, you have diabetes, you, this, 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 this. He went down the list. Mm. He hadn't even looked at my records. And when he, he says, the medicine that I want you to try. And he gave me the medicine. And I said, he said, it's very expensive, but I'm going to give it to you. Wow. I, hallelujah, Jesus. He gave me the medicine. And after I tried and it helped, and I still had to take the pain pills and blah, 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 blah. But one night, my daughter came over. I couldn't. Y'all, it hurt to pick up a phone. It hurt to pick up a spoon. Everything hurt. Mm. From my head to my toe, it hurt. And she came on one night. She said, Mom, the Lord told me to come over here and pray for you. And she helped me out of the chair. I said, he did? She said, yeah. I said, well, what you waiting on? I said, go get the oil. <laughs> I said, go get the oil. And she went and got the oil. And I said, Lord, Lord, can't nobody do this but you. Yeah. And hallelujah, Jesus. And she prayed, anointed me and prayed me with it all. And y'all, I had heat from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. Yeah. Then I had cold from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. <laughs> all of that pain left. Yeah. This has been yeah. about 10 years ago, and to this day, I have not had an ounce of that pain. Yeah. God did yeah. it for me. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Yeah, come on, y'all. Come on. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank y'all for, for sharing, and thank y'all for being patient with those who share. Um, so remember your testimony. Remember the thing that God did for you. Remember that, because, because that, that's the fuel that drives you to tell your testimony. Amen? When you go through the pain that Sister Woolwich went through, and then somebody prayed for you, and then you have 10 years pain-free that you haven't had any pain, listen, it's that testimony. It's that testimony. So, um, and when, when you hear somebody who was paralyzed and, the, you know, disfigured on part of their body, they had to learn how to walk and talk again. Listen, listen, God is amazing. I, I'll end with this, and then we'll watch, we'll watch our, our announcements, and then we'll let you guys out of here. But, but um, don't, and y'all hear this, hear this prophetically. Don't wait until God has to make you put the pot down. Because he will maketh you lie down. 